Today I want to talk about The Dead Bricks, which is a YouTube Lego zombie show that I did, inspired by The Walking Dead. And many of you guys have probably not seen it, so let me talk about it. Because now I mainly build stuff, and I tell you guys what I'm building, and I tell you about the process, and I show you everything. But I've also been doing stop motion for such a long time, so I want to do more of that. And I think I could just tell you about... dead bricks and what's going on in that story and that universe so let's go the dead bricks is basically zombie cliche after zombie cliche but i wanted to switch it up a bit for some things i'm very inspired by the walking dead and all of the zombie films that inspired me when i grew up the things that the things that piqued my interest from zombie movies and interesting uh, gimmicks from different movies so everything that i've gathered from media at the time, this was like 2012, I've put all into this show. The whole thing starts in a science lab, as it usually does with zombies. And as I said, I was 12, maybe 13 years old when I came up with this, so don't judge me too harshly now, please. A man drops the science experiment that turns out to be a zombie virus. We follow a guy that works as a painter, he repaints house, his name is Vincent. He's just finishing up a job, he's, he's painting this house, and then all of a sudden a zombie shows up. This is where the apocalypse begins. Wait, what, what the fuck? A zombie is devouring a lady and he hides. This is just the, the kind of chaotic outbreak that I wanted to show. I wanted people to to see that, oh shit. I wanted it to be from a perspective of a, just a civilian regular guy. I also wanted to add a lot of blood and use gore because I was inspired by so many gory Lego videos from the time. If you've seen them, you know what I'm talking about. If you've seen my content, you can clearly see that it's very inspired by that old school Lego stop-motion gore videos that most animators at the time did. Vincent gets saved by a group and they start working their way out out of the city. They find some kind of car dealership or a car mechanic. One of the girls from the group she gets bit and left behind. They check out the place, and it seems safe, and it seems... quiet. Hell man, I think we just lost someone! Yeah, the place seems secure. Check upstairs as well. Oh, slow, slow down They second. debate whether they should stay or not, and they figure out that, yeah, maybe we... Maybe we should stay for the night, and be safe, and figure out what's actually going on here. Hey man, you saw what happened to Brittany? Did you see what happened to the girl in the dress? No, I'm sorry. What's going on? This is where they first encounter a guy that's been bit by a zombie. And the dilemma starts. What should we even do? What's going on here? Is this a virus? Is this... What's going on with the world? We go to the next episode, which is uh, actually episode 1 part 2. I don't know I don't know why I did this, but I think it's because this episode is so short. I wanted to keep it... I didn't want this to be another episode because it was too short. It, here we have the first episode where I voice act and I voice act as a teenager so later on I remastered this episode when I put up the recap video which recaps the whole of season one and I actually redid the voices because these voices are horrible. Fun fact, Rachel is actually voiced by my mother who's not that great at English, but she's doing her best, she's a trooper. Here, they're debating on what they're actually gonna do, because they are stuck at a car mechanics, and they don't know what's going on in the world. Vincent is trying to step up to be some kind of leader, but it doesn't go well. This guy gets bit, and it's just a shit show. You got that gun out of my face! Once again, man... I'm now they have a man that's bit, and they have to figure out what they're actually gonna do. This is difficult, because the guy who was bit before, the guy from the previous episode who told everyone he was bit, 
he turned into a zombie. So now everyone thinks that this guy is going to turn into a zombie as well. And they have to figure out what to do. Listen to me. They decide to actually wait for a while and see what happens. Let the guy live and see if he turns into a zombie or not. And that's basically the end of the episode. It's a bottle episode, which means that they're stuck in the same room and arguing. Episode 2, which is the official episode 2 and not only the part 2 of episode 1, this is where shit goes down. Because they wake up and all of a sudden there are bikers, a biker gang are entering the car mechanic because it was their garage. They kill the guy who's infected and the other ones have to fight their way out of the car mechanic. Bob, he gets shot in the head. And I just I, I just love this scene because it's so sudden and it's one of the most glorious things I did in these first episodes. There's a huge shootout, people shoot at each other and they just have to run. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is so stupid, but they're actually leaving from a window, jumping down, and uh, Vincent he jumps down and he says he, he jumps down and he hurts himself. <laughs> but he says uh, when they ask how he he's doing, he's just ah it's nothing. I just broke my leg, which is so stupid. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay. It's nothing. I just broke my leg. I don't know why I did this. Why would I even add that line? Why wouldn't he say he's fine? Because now I have to work with a broken leg. And of course I forget it in the next episode. He doesn't have a broken leg in the next episode. And people comment about this because it's such a stupid mistake. I d it didn't need to be in there. In the next episode, this is episode 3. We're moving, f we're, we're flying through these episodes now. Because they got shorter and shorter because I didn't have enough time and I wanted them to look as good as possible. In episode 3 I have added some special effects, I've learned After Effects, so I'm doing a lot of muscle flashes and blood, which was very fun at the time. It still is. This is probably 6 months after the first episode, maybe? Not even that, maybe 3-4 months. But I've learned some stuff. They're trying to kill some zombies and escape. They're doing their best, but it's hard because they are in the middle of the city. They are in the middle of it and all of a sudden they find even more survivors. They get saved by them. This is Jenko, Sarah, Robert and... Uh, I can't remember his name. Diego. Diego, yeah. And he gets bit. He dies. They find each other and they get out of there in their RV. Very inspired by The Walking Dead, of course. Jenko, look, it's Robert and Diego. Episode 4 was the first time I introduced a new voice actor, which was actually a Lego YouTuber at the time. He did a lot of stop motion videos, and I loved his content. What His content inspired me to start, actually. And uh, to have him voice as a character on my show was amazing. I, I was so honored to have him on. He plays Robert, and this is the first big, big argument of the show. The, I, I really like this. This guy did a great job. Shout out to Classic Lego Cinema for doing such a great job on voice acting for Robert. Haven't you noticed the world's changed? The law is gone. There are people eating each other out on the streets for Christ's sake. They argue in this episode trying to figure out what's going on. They are... I, I did a sad attempt at mouth animations and I mismatched it so much. If you look at Sarah's mouth, you can see that it's just the wrong color, the wrong size, everything is looking horrible. But once again, I, I'm basically like 13, 14, so I did my best. I was a child. They argue Dominic. Dominic is a police officer and he's telling Robert to calm down and that the police are gonna sort this out. But, well, they're not. Of course they're not. It's the apocalypse. Nothing's gonna happen. They're not gonna save this situation. It's a zombie apocalypse, for Christ's sake. They argue for a while, they, they, everyone tells their backstories and just introduce, the, introduce themselves to each other, so we get to know all of the characters. Then they stop at a gas station, and this is the Quickie Mart set. I love this Lego set from The Simpsons, so I just had to put it in the show. They stop, they figure out what to do, they split up, which you should never do, never split up in an apocalypse. Vincent and Robert go into the store to check for supplies and see what they can find. Surprise, surprise, the store turns out to be full of zombies. I'm 
I'm sorry, man, but you're already dead. Robert, you bastard! They get overrun and Robert leaves Vincent. And this was my first cliffhanger. And this cliffhanger was a mean one because I kept you guys waiting for almost like two years to find out what actually happened to Vincent. This is why I want to finish this series so bad. Because I don't want to leave you guys with such horrible cliffhangers no more. I, I mean, it was a good cliffhanger, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging for so long. The next episode, this was my most viewed episode. Today it has 490,000 views. And it, it was seven years ago. We need to find the other! Hey, Diego! This is the episode where the shit goes down, the group that's just found each other, they split up. They leave the gas station, everyone's going their separate ways. Robert drives away with the RV, and Vincent is still inside the store. Dominic and Jenko escape onto the roof, and Sarah and Rachel run away. Fuck! Go, 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 go! Up the roof! No! Jenko, continue up the roof while I cover you! We have my hand. We follow Sarah and Rachel for a while, and then we follow Dominic and Jenko on the roof, arguing. Jenko's given up on life, he, he's scared for his life, he's worrying about his wife. That's a r nice rhyme. Dominic, as a police officer, is trying to calm him down and just figure things out. And I think I wanted to make some uh, character development and develop their relationship between them, between those two. I think I did an okay job. I, I mean, the characters are great. I really like Dominic and Jenko and their character dynamic. Their relationship dynamics. Rachel and Sarah, they run away as I mentioned. They are also very worried. Rachel has never been... She's never been relying on herself. She's always been relying on other people. So now she's scared and doesn't know what to do. Sarah's a girl who's in the wilderness, she likes to go camping, so she knows what she's doing. And Sarah's looking up to her, looking to her for advice. They find a restaurant that seems abandoned. It's still... Since it's only a few days into the apocalypse, the lights are still working, the power is on. So they go inside the restaurant to find something to eat and find shelter for the night. They have a chat, they have some wine, they just enjoy talking to each other. And all of a sudden, a new group shows up. Another cliffhanger. I love doing these cliffhangers, and I, I kept doing them, and I even, I, I maybe even overdid them. I don't know. What do you guys think? You who have been here for such a long time and watched all of the episodes, what do you think? Did I overdo it? Did I overdo it with the cliffhangers, or are you... Is it good? Because I like doing them, but I know it's mean to the audience. Episode 6 starts with a flashback. Sarah is doing dishes, she's cooking food, and Jenko is having a bad nightmare that she's dying. This is foreshadowing, guys. <laughs> this was on the nose foreshadowing, but uh, I think it was fun. It worked. It was something different. Something that not all of LEGO YouTubers were doing at the time. Jenko wakes up from his bad dream. Dominic and Jenko realizes that the zombies are gone, so they head down. They look for the other people and realize that they're all gone. They take a stroll on the road, talking, some bit, some, some more talking, they're just trying to figure out what's going on. All of a sudden, Vincent pops out from the store. He survived, he's got his fire axe and he's running for his life. Then we got Sarah and Rachel hiding in the restaurant from Adam, Lenny and Lucy. Lucy is the kid and Adam and Lenny are surviving together, they're best friends and Lucy is Adam's daughter. It turns out they weren't that dangerous at all. They had the kid with them. So they start talking and try to figure out what's going on and what they're gonna do. Meanwhile, Jenko and Dominic are still walking along the road and Jenko starts telling him about what happened the first day of the apocalypse. He starts telling him about Robert and their relationship. Because it's a messy one. He's telling him about uh, the grocery store, what happened that day and that Robert was Insane. He's he wasn't in a bad place, and they helped each other. I'm not gonna shoot you, okay? I'm just trying to make you see that your way of doing things isn't the right way to do things, okay? Hey, come with me. We have an RV just outside the store. 
Now we go to Robert, and this is the first time we see Robert alone, so we follow him and see what happens. He runs into the same biker gang that we've seen before. They've set up a roadblock and they're they're watching the road trying to rob people. Robert is talking to them, trying to use his charm and get away and uh, get a free passage through the gate. It doesn't go that well. When he tries to interact with Gerald, who is the main guy, the boss, well... It's a bit of a disrespect from both parts. The whole scene ends up with Robert driving through the gate and just escaping them. Robert is so happy that he got away, so he just he screams out loud and celebrates. We go back to the restaurant where Rachel, Sarah, Lenny, Adam and Lucy are having a nice dinner trying to plan what to do next. Adam knows a guy in a town and he has a car dealership, which was a common theme for some reason. I don't know why I wanted so many car dealerships. I think I wanted a reason for the guys to get a car. But Adam knows someone who has a car so they plan to go into the city and find that car. End of episode. Episode 7, it's actually titled The Car. And this one, this one's a mean episode. The episode starts with the, the group, Sarah and Rachel's group. The, it starts by them planning what they're gonna do. Adam tells Lucy not to worry about things, it's gonna be alright. Then they go into the city. And this city is full of zombies, so they have to be careful. They sneak around for a bit, and then they get caught, they hide inside a diamond shop. Inside here, they're trying to figure out what to do next, because they're stuck in there. They manage to get out and find the car dealership. In here, shit goes sideways really fast. The place is full of zombies, so they start killing them. That went surprisingly well. Shit, we need to check on Rachel and Oh Lucy. god, you're right! Rachel takes Lucy upstairs to hide from the zombies while the rest of the gang clears the zombies out. Upstairs, they realize that Rachel and Lucy are being held at gunpoint by a crazy man with just one arm. This guy's been bit and he sawed his arm off with a saw. As soon as Sarah enters, she gets shot by the man. They shoot each other, they both go down. And this is a really sad moment, because this is where Sarah dies. Rachel's inspiration, her idol. And she's crazy. She goes into berserk mode. She kills the man with an axe and just chops away his head until there's nothing left. Everything in front of Lucy was just a child. She's covered in blood. And it's insane. It's intense. I, I wanted this scene to be so dark. Which is fun, because... It's Lego. They're Lego people. This episode ends on a bad note. Jesus! What the fuck happened here? Oh my god. The guys are horrified of what they're seeing. We're closing in on the end of this season. In this episode, we follow Robert, and it starts with him crashing the RV. After that, the biker gang catches up to him, and uh, it's a fun little, it's a fun part where they trade some dialogue and they're mean to each other. Robert ends up hiding in the RV, thinking he's gonna take his own life because he's just miserable and doesn't know what to do. Gerald throws a Molotov <laughs> onto the RV, and the guy starts shooting. Turns out to a shootout, and Robert gets captured.
I'll teach you right out oh. straight. Now, don't mess bitch. with another man's balls. Don't oh. mess with his jewels, you know? Bitch. It ain't cool. Bitch. They leave Robert for dead, they take everything he's got, and he just keeps running out into the woods, killing all of the zombies. He's alone. Is he gonna die? Well, probably not. The next episode, episode 9, it's Canned Beans. This was only five years ago, so you're imagining how how fast time flies by. This episode we follow Vincent. He's alone, he's independent, he's trying to survive in the woods, he was left alone in that gas station, and he's now trying to survive. He meets a survivor, and they fight each other. They fight each other quite a lot. Vincent ends up taking the upper hand, and uh, he captures him. They sit down for a nice... Uh, well, they don't sit down. Vincent kidnaps him, ties him up, and they sit down by the fire and talk. Which is necessary in an apocalypse. You have to talk to each other to figure out what's going on and who everyone is. They talk to each other. Vincent is eating canned beans, which is just a fun episode name and a fun thing to put in it. They talk a bit and they realize that they shouldn't be fighting. They should help each other. Especially when the zombies show up. All of a sudden they're surrounded by zombies. And they have to help each other. We go back to uh, Robert and Dominic, who's out walking, following the road, trying to find something. Even just anything. And they end up finding the one thing that they didn't want to find. They find Robert, who's been an asshole. He stole the RV, he left Vincent to die. They find him and they argue if they should even help him. They end up helping him down from the RV where he was hiding from the zombies and they have a heartfelt chat. Nice to see you again, Jenko. You two showed up just in time. I knew someone still cared about me. Fuck you, Robert. Next time I'll kill you. I hope you know that. <sighs> Thanks. Reunions sure are the best. So why are you here, if not to save me? You fucked up our group and left with the only vehicle we had. The rest of us got divided, and now we're looking for Sarah and Rachel, all thanks to you. Where's Vincent? Did... did he make it? What the fuck does it look like, you prick? Do you see Vincent anywhere? No. No. Well, you know why. Because we left him. You left him in that store, Robert. You're the reason he's dead. You selfish son of a bitch. You're pathetic. So pathetic that you only care about yourself and expect others to care about you no matter what you've done. Vincent is surviving together with Liam, and Liam is the guy who Vincent tied up. They're running away, and when they're running away... I, I, man, I put this guy through so much in this show. Vincent runs ahead, and Liam gets his foot trapped in a bear trap. That's horrible. We move on, and this episode is episode 10, which is the last episode of season 1. And it was only 4 years ago. The episode starts with Vincent trying to save Liam from the bear trap, so he's carrying him in to a cabin in the woods. In the city, we see Rachel having to put a bullet in Sarah's head. She's lying there under a tarp, dead, and she's just horrified. Adam and Lenny and Lucy actually leave Rachel there because she wa she went berserk. She was crazy with that axe. So they decide to leave her all alone in the big city. Rachel wakes up to zombies eating Sarah's corpse. She gets so mad because that's her new best friend and she just destroys the zombies. She goes on a rampage, ending up on the roof of a building, surrounded by zombies. Vincent encounters a sheriff hiding in the cabin and they start fighting. They don't understand each other, they're arguing and all of a sudden Vincent kills the, the sheriff. 
Liam is scared, the zombies are coming in because of the gunshots. And inside the cabin next to Liam is the guard from the first episode who helped Vincent survive. He saved him from the mechanic and saved him from the uh, from the biker gang. And Vincent shoots him. He's distraught. He, he, he can't understand what he's done. He's, he's just horrified and feels horrible. He realizes what he's done and he snaps out of it. Liam and Vincent have to run away after Liam realizes what he what Vincent did to his leg. He's <laughs> he, he can't understand it. He's just in shock. They hide in the living room, try to barricade themselves. And then they fall down into the basement where they find a stash of guns. They clear out the zombies and everything is alright. Sure we both were done for. I'm, I'm, I'm positive now that we're unkillable. We can't die. We end on a very dark note where Adam, Lenny and Lucy are sitting in the rain talking and realize that maybe it's over. Maybe this is it. Wow, what a, what a bright way to end season 1. I have a full video that's a recap of the whole season 1, which basically works as a full movie. You can watch that, I have the link down below. And let's move on to season 2. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's make it a bit quicker, because this is more recent for you who have seen it. Episode 1, season 2, starts with a recap. We see what happened. Vincent is mourning the guy he shot because he feels horrible about that. They bury some dead bodies. And then we actually do a time jump. <laughs> 30 days into the apocalypse, which is um, about a month. They're surviving, they've learned to cope with stuff, they're, uh, they know how to kill zombies, they know what to do out in the wild. And Liam has a crutch, so he's actually surviving with that one leg. They, they seem to have a routine down and they know what they're doing. Here I really stepped up the quality I think, but this... <laughs> I also have to remind myself that this was only three years ago, so I was a grown up and knew what I was doing. The guys are just doing a supply run, trying to figure out what to do next, looking for a safe haven, looking for, for stuff, and they get attacked by zombies, as they always do. But they survive, they manage to do it. They keep walking, and uh, here I wanted everyone to have the same goal in this season, so everybody is going to Montreal for the safe place. Because apparently there's a safe haven in Montreal, they want to go there, everyone. So I wanted everyone to push towards the same location. I think it works. They end up walking for a few days, and then they finally show up at another gas station. I don't know what my deal is with the gas stations, but they end up at a gas station and the episode ends on a huge cliffhanger. Liam gets his face sliced with a machete and he falls down. Damn, that was mean. That was a mean cliffhanger. We go to episode 2, which is all about Rachel. Rachel is alone in the city, surviving on a rooftop. She falls down into a mall. I don't know how she survived that fall, but that's up to my and your imagination. In the mall, there's other survivors, but they go down and Rachel tries to find them, but she doesn't manage to. She ends up locked up inside a store. And this is where she spends her upcoming 30 days. Stuck inside a mall. She does everything she can to survive and to just 
learn from this experience. She she cuts her hair to not get grabbed by zombies. She tries to learn how to fight. She everything she does these this month to improve on herself. Walking in the distance, looking for a stranger, looking for attention, fighting passion, burning in the soul of the heart. Young lovers revel in the fury, teenage souls, no need to hurry. Youth is fleeting, we have no time to cry. Dancing souls, slamming doors at home. Then she finds out that there's a safe place in Montreal, so she has to get there. She decides she's gonna stock up and head out. Episode 3 is one of my biggest episodes Because this episode is full of things Everything is going down in this episode We start the episode by recapping what's actually going on in the world People are getting eaten by zombies, uh, everything is uh, going to shit they're just trying to survive, we see the beginning of the outbreak, we see what happened these previous 30 days and what's actually going on in the world. Then we follow Dominic, Jenko and Robert. They also find out that there's a safe haven in Montreal by the news, because they actually found a TV that's working on the RV. The, we, have to, we have to remember that 30 days into the apocalypse, everything's still working, everything's still fine, shit's just going down. It's a slow process. The world doesn't collapse in 30 days, because Rome wasn't built in a day. I don't know, but it takes some time. And I wanted to, to show that this isn't an apocalypse, everything doesn't happen on one day, everything takes time. So the civilization is still ending, it's still there. The guys survive for a bit, uh, they find another gas station, but I, I guess it's reasonable because they're following the road, so of course they're gonna find gas stations. Uh, Dominic and Robert talk a bit, Dominic really pushing that Robert is a dick, he's an asshole. Then when they go outside they find that Jenko is being held at gunpoint by the biker gang that's been there and following them for such a long time, they've been following Robert. They end up in a big shootout and this shootout goes on for such a long time. I think it's about a five minute long shootout that ends up in a car chase and the, the RV goes down from a cliff into the water. Dominic gets shot and this is just chaos. Next episode, we see Robert alone in the woods, once again alone, and he's running from the bikers. Here I borrowed in another voice actress, she's uh, really great, and a friend of mine, she did a great job on doing this, uh, this character right here. I'm gonna definitely keep her in, because she's doing a great job. You smell anything, girl? <coughs> Robert is running around in the forest. I worked a lot with the, the light in this season. And I wanted the light to look really good and uh, feel alive. Robert ended up having a really interesting fight with Gerald, where Robert actually spares Gerald's life, but Gerald gets so angry that he accidentally basically kills himself by having Robert slice his throat. Then he gets eaten by zombies.
this episode ends with Robert going into the store where Vincent and Liam were hiding. And we see the other perspective where Robert actually was afraid, hiding, and goes to attack someone with his machete and accidentally slices Liam's face. So we see that it was Robert all along, which is just such a huge blow. Because you already hate Robert. And now it got even worse. We're working through these episodes fast. This was episode 4, season 2. Now we go over to episode 5. This is the last episode I've done. And I did it one year ago, so I'm really sorry that I haven't put out the next one. That's why I'm doing this video, because I'm working on the next video. But I'm doing it as we speak. This episode opens up with a huge scene. The RV is on fire, everything is sinking into the water. Dominic is trying to wake up underwater. We think he's gonna die, which is huge, because he's a big character. He manages to get up through the water. He climbs up and uh, survives. And he sees that everything's on fire and it's chaos. This is when he's stabbed in the back by Dennis. Dennis is one of the biker gang members and they have a knife fight. They fight for a bit and then Jenko saves Dominic's life. He kills Dennis. Jenko, that, that, that timing was incredible. You saved my life. How are you, man? Oh, I have to add, in this episode, I'm very, very sorry about the visuals in this episode. I decided to try to use a blender to make more realistic character expressions, but I ended up looking mismatched and out of reality, so the, the blender 3D faces, it did not end up looking good. These characters look very, very digital and very 3D. I'm so sorry about that. I had to experiment, but this show was the wrong place to do it, because you got taken out of the episode and it looked bad. So I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do that again. I've learned from my mistakes. They have a long talk about what, what they're gonna do and what's going on. Then we get to see some of the bikers, because we haven't seen their perspective. They have a conversation. They seem like reasonable people, some of them. One of the guys, uh, he, well, he doesn't seem reasonable at all, actually. Ringing the dinner bell! You're the absolute worst. I hope you get bit, you psycho. Did you guys hear anything from Gerald or Dennis? Should we regroup? This feels sketchier by the minute. Uh, yeah, they're probably beating the shit out of the ginger man and that fucking cop. You might be right. But what if something's gone wrong, you know? Shouldn't we regroup just to be on the safe side? Tina? Shut the fuck up. They end up getting surrounded by zombies and they kill a few of them. Big shout out to Ben L Animations for helping me out with this character. He did a great job on the voice acting. The girl runs away, tries to hide, and she ends up meeting Dominic and Jenko. And Jenko is very hasty with that trigger, so he kills her in cold blood with an Uzi. He just blasts her, her entire body full of bullet holes. and then they are surrounded by zombies. This is how episode 5 ends, and this is the last episode I did. So I'm sorry for the cliffhanger. We're gonna get back into it. This is why I'm, uh, as I mentioned, this is why I'm doing the video, because I really want to show you that I care, and I want to finish this season. I want to finish this show for you guys, and for me. It's been a passion project for the last couple of years but it's really hard to move on without finishing it so thank you for sitting through this recap i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got a clearer view of what's actually going on here and what this show is about 
I'm going to go and work on the next episode so you guys can see it. I hope you guys enjoy and if you want to see the episodes without commentary, both the recap and the season 2 playlist are listed down below. So thank you, I'll see you in the next video.